Say good morning to you. Not only is it the day before you leave for Italy, lucky you, <laughs> but we get to see Steven Strasberg on a big league mound for the first time in over a year. What's the expectation? Yes, Lauren, uh, and good morning, and thanks for the well wishes there. Uh, Steven Strasberg, a long-anticipated debut for him this season, to say the very least. And, and Davey Martinez talked yesterday with Nationals reporters about how the key thing is they took their time with Strasburg to get back from this point. So that way, when he takes them out today, there won't be those limitations. He's really taking his time through the minor leagues. They're feeling very confident right now, Lauren, about where Strasburg is with his arm. Of course, missed all of baseball of last year uh, with surgeries. Only pitched, Lauren, 26 and two-thirds innings since the World Series in 2019. It's amazing the time he's missed, but certainly he's under contract through 2026 and desperately as a professional. He's such a great competitor, wants to get back out there. This is one of the best postseason pitchers of his generation, and he wants to now help this Nationals team through what's been a difficult stretch for the ball club. So it, it appears to me, Lauren, he's going to get out there in, in five, six innings. I think it's certainly possible for Steven Strasburg, a very welcome return indeed for the Washington Nationals. I don't remember many big league debuts, but his stands alone. 14 strikeout yes. performance, completely dominant. I remember it well. Clayton Kershaw's had a few of those. Managing his workload will certainly be important and vital. What will he, his capacity be now and down the stretch and into October? All of it, JP. You know, Lorna, it's a great question. And right now, it looks like Kershaw is going to make his return to the Dodgers rotation on Sunday. Uh, according to MLB.com, that's the most likely scenario. He's missed about a month. He had a very encouraging start at the Class A level in the last several days. Things appear to be going well since then. It's a right SI joint, so right sort of where his hip uh, meets his back almost is, is where the issue has been for Kershaw. But he's doing better now, seems healthy. I think to your point, Lauren, he, he's going to take maybe a little bit of extra time. I, I don't think we'll see him go seven innings, let's say, or eight innings in his first start. I think the Dodgers are going to be careful with him as they bring him back, and, and for good reason. They need him ready to pitch around Halloween is, is, their, is their idea, to pace him out so that way he's, he's at his peak at that point. Because you think about where the Dodgers are. They're in first place. Tony Gonsolin's been arguably the best pitcher in the National League so far this season. And let's not forget, Kershaw is not the last pitcher they expect to get back to the rotation this year. Dustin May, remember how dynamic he was just a couple postseasons ago. They expect May to be back around the middle part of this year as well. So some really encouraging times for the Dodgers. Again, uh, what a time for him to come back for Kershaw against the arch-rival Giants on a Sunday. Uh, Halloween is the World Series. Very interesting, JP. <laughs> Dodgers ahead of the Giants out west. Joey Bart sent down to AAA. Does that perhaps <clears throat> open up opportunities come the trade deadline? What are their plans? Lauren, that was the first question that I asked yeah. when I saw the news yesterday about Joey Bart going down to the minor leagues. And Farhan Zaidi was very candid in saying he still believes that Bart is an everyday catcher, but he's now struggled. This is not the first time he's struggled. So you have to think, what is the future? And it could be potentially Wilson Contreras, who is going to be out there and available during the course of this trading season. I do think, Lauren, this is about the time when those trade conversations begin to kick in. And Contreras with the Cubs, as dynamic as Christopher Morell has been and all the excitement surrounding him, this is still going to be a selling midseason for the Cubs. And we saw it happen last year. Now, Contreras not in the final year of his deal yet, but it's but when you think about where this club is heading, they were they traded Baez, they traded Rizzo, they traded Bryant. This is a team that I think has been very realistic about where they are. And if they cannot find a way to sign Contreras, I think a trade in the next two months is very possible. And right now, you look around all the contenders in Major League Baseball, the Giants have the most glaring need at that catching position. And so it would not surprise me at all if some way in the next two months before that August 2nd trade deadline, Contreras could be a giant. Oh, wow. Trade history with Bryant. Perhaps a little foreshadowing there. Blue Jays getting their first look at Gabriel Moreno this weekend. They actually need him, so no time for nerves. They've gotten production, offensive production, from that catcher spot. Will this be no different? What's the expectation? Well, Lauren, he is a special young catcher. And certainly, as you point out, the Blue Jays have had the most productive catching position of any team in the major leagues this year between Alejandro Kirk and Danny Jansen. Jansen just had the finger injury, so he's now on the IL. And here comes Gabriel Moreno. So much excitement for him. A great story that I'd recommend to all of our, our viewers at MLB.com about his journey from Barquisimeto, Venezuela, to now being a, a top-line prospect, the number four prospect in the game, according to MLBPipeline.com. 
really good two-way catcher, defends exceptionally well, had a very good spring training too. He is ready. I think, Lauren, I, I describe his overall readiness as being similar to Kiba Ruiz with the Nationals. See, I think he can make that kind of an impact. So, again, uh, I recommend highly the, the Julie Cruz and Keegan Matheson story on Moreno at MLB.com. He signed for $25,000, as they write, and has basically willed his way into being one of the very best minor league players uh, in the world at the moment. And certainly now he's a minor leaguer no more, should be activated this weekend and make his debut in the great city of Detroit. Oh, Robert and I are jealous of your accommodations on the road. Is that a five-star hotel that you're staying I, I, in? I don't, Lauren. I, I just, I just go where I'm told. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't count the stars. Yeah. This is a pretty nice. This is a pretty nice hotel, though. Love he San like Diego. It. Great spot. And, and by the way, this is, this is how much I love you guys. It is currently 6:40, 6:49 a.m. So I, I get up nice you're and early so I can join the show. I'm, I'm a fan of the show. You, you guys are yeah. the best. Different well, roles. thanks for mentioning the time. We can't re-air this segment now. So. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, <Yeah>. JP. <laughs> oh, TV humor, it's the best. <laughs>